Welcome back, Egyptology lovers. Today we are going to discuss another stella from the Old Kingdom. I'm going to try to do one more after this, but this will be the second stella. So today we're going to discuss the stella of Weapon Nefreth from the 4th Dynasty during the reign of Hufu. Hufu, if you don't know, built the large or the Great Pyramid of Giza. So let's get into this stella and describe what's going on first and then reading the hieroglyphs and which direction to go from. So if you haven't already guessed, this is Weapon Nefret. His name is up here. I'll go through that afterwards. So this is a limestone stella, a type of stone that they use, very easy to carve. It's painted in low raised relief. So raised meaning that it's sticking out of the rock, but low enough that it's not too high up. With a male figure, here figure, seated on a stool with bovine legs, meaning a cow's legs. Now the Old Kingdom, the legs were cows on tables as time progressed into the uh, Middle Kingdom, New Kingdom, legs became that of leopards or tigers or lions. And an offering table here of bread loaves. So they always used to have, usually have an offering. This is a, um, like a stool or a pottery that holds the table. You can see the color difference. And these are the bread loaves, eight, four facing one way and four facing the other way. He is also... Now he's wearing a shoulder length wig. You can see it comes up just his shoulders, not past the back with a square beard and a mustache. Back in those days, they had mustaches in the fourth kingdom. It was the style, I guess. A uh, long leopard pelt, a long one right here. The leopard prints have gone. They've, it's just time eroded the color away. And he is holding his uh, cloth attachment here with one arm and the one shoulder is exposed. And he's also wearing bracelets, bracelets, excuse me. And basically that's his name up here. So this is generally who he is, Weapon Nefret. And now we're gonna find out who he is. So we're gonna start with one section and then work our way. There's four in total. So this is Weapon Nefret and this is his offering. In the Old Kingdom, they used to do an offering to the Pharaoh at the time, but that, but in the Old Kingdom, I mean in the New Kingdom, I'm sorry, but in the Old Kingdom, they never did that. Usually they'd have their name and then who, the, the current pharaoh is and the time of his reign or an offering to the king and so on and so forth. But in the old kingdom, they didn't. So that's just showing you how time goes on and how inscriptions change and writing and the way society changes. So here we go. Going forward, let's start with the first column, the red. We're going to go from the top bottom, top bottom, and then we're going to read to the side and then to the side here. And this is the first section, section A. And here we go. So reading over here, uh, much like the New Kingdom, they would always introduce themselves. So here, this is the word commander. So the commander of the king's scribes. Commander or overseer, right? Uh, overseer of Mahit. So Mahit is the same word over here. Mahit. Mahit. And uh, this particular symbol, we don't really know what it is. It's not identified. I'm sure somebody's probably found out, but I'm not very aware of it, but probably a symbol of the actual location or city or gnome, most likely the city district. So overseer of Mahit. The priests, now priests, you'll see this is the priest symbol, and then this is divine, so it makes it the word. So the priest of, this is a goddess. So the priests of Seshat. And then you have again here, going for down to the bottom, foremost of the archives of the king's property. Over here now, we have priest, without the divine word for Nichir, just the priest itself, so we know it's the same. Priest of the souls of Pe, which is a location. This is the priests, again, you see it's come back together, the priests of the Northern Horus, priests, or the priest of Anubis, overseer. Now this is an overseer. In the newer kingdom, middle kingdom, there would be a cow's tongue, but this is one of the more traditional, uh, archaic or more old kingdom styles of an overseer. So overseer of the fishers, which is a boat, so it defines that they are fishermen. Now going up here to the row on the very top, as you can see, we're reading from right to left and top to down. So continuing from right to left where the animals are facing, that's how you read, you go in that direction. So reading over here, continuing on. The great Ur, so that's the word great, 
the great one of the tens of Upper Egypt. So this is the uh, Shemai. This is the symbol of Upper Egypt, which is the uh, the papyrus lotus flower, uh, lotus flower, excuse me. And this is the symbol number 10. So it's a folded type of cloth or folded almost uh, ellipse, half an ellipse. And this is the number 10. So 10 areas or cities of Upper Egypt. So the great of the tens of Upper Egypt. The Heka priest of Mehit, the same as the Mehit here, of Mehit, the location. The priest of Heket. And the Het priest of Ha, which is a gnome, a district, the Het priest of Ha. And the king's son. So he wasn't a king's son, but he is like a king's son, that he was close to the circle of the king. And this was the title they used for themselves, the king's son. And here is his name, Wepem Nefret. Ooh, this is the oo sound. But this is also oo wep. So that's a P, that's an oo. These are compliments. So wep. So this is the word wep. It tells you that you have to pronounce it as an oo and a p. So wep. And m, the m, so wepem. And then nefret. Wepem nefret. So that's the first section. Let's move on to the next section, which is the uh, section below here in the yellow. Now, these are the Ha symbols. They're the number 1,000. And everything in the Old Kingdom offered in 1,000 uh, quantities. So let's start doing the uh, offerings, and we'll get to it. So this is 1,000 pieces of linen, 1,000 pieces of alabaster vessel, a type of stone, 1,000 Loaves of bread. This is the type of bread. Usually it's this way as well, but sometimes they're, they're more like a cone. A thousand jars of beer and a thousand antelope and a thousand oxen. All right, continuing now to section C, which is in the blue. This is, says here, implementation or a device or a canister for washing of hands. You have a hand and its hand is washing with water on the very top here. So let's begin by reading this way, down, and continuing to the left. You see how we went from left to right, but now we're going right to, le uh, right to left, now we're going left to right. So sometimes you just have to see where the animals are facing, or the hand, and then you know which direction to go. All right, so going here, we're gonna read the very first thing. A thousand incense. A thousand green eye paint. A thousand bowls of black eye paint. A thousand of the best containers of ointment. A thousand jars of wine. A thousand bowls of Sisyphus. A thousand Okay, now this is a two-word construct. I put a color purple here like I did there because it's one offering with two sections. So a thousand green sechet cake. Sechet cake. So a thousand green sechet cake. All right, going over here. A thousand bowls of carabines. A thousand bowls of figs. A thousand containers of prepared grain is the word prepared grain. A thousand sechet or white this is the word white hedge. So a thousand. So this one, I'm sorry, not a thousand. I apologize. There's no thousand years. You can see there's no ha symbol. So it's just sechet or white sechet cake. There's a thousand again for the next offering. A thousand percy fruit. A thousand jars of ale, a thousand jars of milk, a thousand jars of date wine, a thousand loaves. As you can see, the loaf is the same over here, loaves of bread, and all things sweet. So we know that. Weapon Nefret loved sweet things, all sweet things that he can take in the later on in the afterlife. Final section, which is D. This is a linen offering. So there's different types of linen. And this is known here as the, the Edmi 
linen. So this type of linen, now you'll learn a little bit about the, the cubits. So here is a thousand again, which you know, and this is uh, linen, which you saw over here, but there's four of them. So this is cubit, four cubits. So a thousand four cubits, and then another thousand of three cubits, another thousand of two cubits, a thousand of one cubit. So this repeats going down here, and this is now the sesher linen, a thousand again of four cubit, a thousand of two cubit, a thousand of, I'm sorry, a thousand of three cubit, a thousand of two cubit, a thousand of one cubit. And then continuing down here, this is known as the shemai or the shemet neferet, which is the fine linen. And it's the same, a thousand four cubit wide, a thousand three cubit wide, a thousand two cubit wide, a thousand one cubit wide. So they're all cubit wides, repeating. Three types of linen. And the final linen here, this is known as the a'a -a linen. The a, a linen. Here you have an interesting symbol. Usually you have the thousand, but you have a thousand one hundred. This little circular little glyph means uh, 100. So 1,100 cubit wide, then 1,040 cubit wide, and 1,030 cubit wide. Now, a couple of things I'll mention about the cubit. So this is pretty much the glyph. So, I mean, the Stella, we've read it all through. Just a couple of little fun notes that you learn about uh, hieroglyphics, if you don't know. I'll just show you a couple of interesting things here. So looking at this, we'll just give, give it a little more light so you can see it. Looking at this here, you could see that some stuff was incorrectly done. Why, we don't know. Maybe it's a choice from the, um, from the actual author of the Stella. So, for example, the wa or the o sound is, is facing the wrong direction. And so is the 100 that we were talking about is also facing the wrong direction. Why is that? Uncertain. The beauty about the Stella is there was a lot of fine detail to it, which makes it exceptionally nice, from the frog and the spots on its back to the line details of the raised relief and the legging. You can see a little muscle on the leg. Uh, this also includes the muscle on the back of the, uh, the, the half lion here, which is the word for best or foremost, and he has a little bit of a bone attachment to his body over here. Uh, detail of the quail, the detail of the owl, um, just a lot of detail that comes with the Stella. There were some adjustments made to the Stella. Uh, you can't really see it, but more around this area over here. Uh, perhaps he, he wanted to add an additional linen, so some adjustments were made. Um, just a lot of a beautiful detail. This is one of the more finest of the details of Stellas and the coloration. Um, and this is the type of Stellas that we love to find in, at the Giza Plateau. Uh, so this is not far off from the pyramid itself. Uh, it's considered the 1200, I believe, uh, Stella, which is the uh, number that was assigned to it, uh, just to make sure that it is. Yes, the Cemetery 1200, that's exactly, that's where it was found. It was an expedition that was done in 1905. So this is the beautiful Stella of Wepen Nefret. So Wepen Nefret. So Wepen Nefret. So that's how you say his name, and this is his offering. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll do another video of Wepen, uh, of another Stella, of someone else in the, um, in the Old Kingdom, in the cemetery as well, by the um, Giza Plateau. But it'll be somebody interesting, you'll see. A little more closer to the king, uh, Hufu, at the time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like the, this type of content, let me know. I'll make some more for you. Uh, follow me if you're not. Subscribe, tell your friends. I try to do as much as I can. Thank you very much, and have a great day.